So if you're an architect looking to build your own PC but don't know where to begin, then this video is for you. I recently switched from my laptop to a desktop after using it for almost 3 years. It was definitely a solid machine because I've been using the laptop for all my professional works up to this point that includes complex illustrations in Photoshop, Illustrator, rendering images and sometimes even walkthrough. The reason I had to switch to a desktop is because I needed a better configuration for all my professional works on a large scale projects and also for video editing. I was also looking to learn new softwares like After Effects and Blender for which I needed a better configuration. So when I started looking out for building a PC, I was pretty clueless because there were a lot of different complicated things that needs to be addressed like processor, graphics and so on. So in this video, I'll try to compile all those suggestions into 10 different points that you need to look for when you're looking to build your own PC. We will not go into the technical details because obviously I am not a technical person but we'll rather look at what are these different 10 components and I'll try to explain them in really simple terms just like how your friend would explain your syllabus a day before your exam. So before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. So number one is the processor. So the first decision that you need to make is the processor. Processor is basically the brain of the computer and it does all the tasks related to computation. You have two different options to choose from, it's either AMD or Intel. There is always a debate as to which is better, but both of these are pretty solid and give you a good performance. AMD has better multi-core performance at a lower price point, so you can pick AMD if you're into 3D modeling and rendering. Intel has higher clock speed and better single core performance, so you can pick Intel if you work heavily on single core processes such as CAD and Revit. I've noticed that most people prefer AMD these days since it offers a good performance at a lesser price point. In case of Intel, anything above i5 11th generation will be your starting point to choose from and in AMD, Ryzen 5 4000 series and above will be a good pick based on your budget. This chart will give you a comparison of the Intels and AMDs and I've picked a Ryzen 7 5700X which is an 8 core 16 thread processor. It is somewhere in between, not too high and not too low. It's kind of a mid-range budget. Number 2 Motherboard The second decision that you need to make is choosing a motherboard which is like the heart of the computer. This connects all the different devices together and it makes it functions. Different top brands for motherboard are MSI, ASRock, Acer or Gigabyte. When choosing a motherboard, you just need to make sure that the processor that you selected previously is compatible with the motherboard that you're selecting. Another consideration is the number of RAM slots and SSD slots that the motherboard has, so you can increase the performance of your PC in future if you want. Most of the motherboards today have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection, so this is an added advantage if you do not want to have too many wire connections. Here's another chart that will help you pick a motherboard for your computer. I picked a motherboard from Gigabyte B550M which is ideal for my processor and also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. Number 3 Graphic Card Graphic Card is the component that enhances the visuals that you see on your computer that includes images, videos, 3D modeling and animation. As for an average architectural workflow, I would say that 8GB of graphics will be ideal. More graphics you have, better visuals you are going to be. So 8GB will be ideal and if you have the budget, you can go for 12GB of graphics. From this chart, the GTX 1060 will be your starting point because I had a GTX 1060 Ti in my 4 year old laptop. On my new PC, I have a Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti with 8GB of graphics, so it's kind of a middle ground performance. The graphic card will mostly be the costliest component in your PC. So make sure when you're choosing one, it has the overall budget to fit your card as well as the other components in your PC. Number 4 RAM RAM is the short term memory of your computer and more RAM the computer has, faster it can do tasks like running a program and doing tasks simultaneously. Here again, you have multiple brands to choose from like G-Skill, Crosshair, Crucial, Kingston, Samsung and so on. The price is going to vary for different brands and the performance also to a small extent. For the architectural workflow, you will need at least 8GB of RAM, 16GB is ideal and 32 is a good number. If you are intensely working on architectural visualizations, then you have to consider 64GB of RAM. Mine is two number of 16GB RAM from Crosshair Vengeance, so there's a total of 32GB RAM. Number 5 is Storage. 
there are two components of storage the primary which is called ssd and the secondary which is called hdd ssd is a chip where your computer stores all the important files and softwares including the operating system a faster ssd will speed up your powering on loading times for applications and pretty much everything else a common setup is to use the primary storage for the os and applications for architects a 500 gb to 1 tb ssd will be required you will also need to check for the speed that is mentioned in the ssd then you can install an additional hdd of 1 tb or higher where you can store all your other files i have a 500 gb nvme ssd from kingston installed in the motherboard which has a speed of 3500 mb per second and an additional 4 tb hard disk attached inside because i have a lot of video files and stuff that i need access to so the first five on the list are the ones that determine the performance of your pc and the next five will complement the major parts of your pc number 6 is the cpu cooler the temperature of our processor needs to be cool at all times and the cpu cooler will do this job for us an air cooler is sufficient for a mid range pc build and a liquid cooler would be needed if you're building a high end pc for powerful processors what i've got is a thermal take uvx 200 air cooler with a cooling power of 130 watts and of course the rgbs number 7 is the power supply the power supply will convert the electricity from the sockets into usable power for the components inside of the computer our workstations will obviously be running for long time throughout the day so the power supply needs to be efficient and reliable around 650 watts of power supply must be sufficient for most pc builds suited for architects or if you're building a high end pc for architectural visualizations then you'll have to pick 750 to 850 watts mine is a 650 watts deep cool smps number 8 is the case the case is the box that houses all the components together inside there are not many considerations here except to see if it's the right size to fit all your components and if it has a good finish my case is from ant esports 220 air model which is not too small or too big and has plenty of space pre-installed fans and the rgbs number 9 is the monitor so the monitor is an important component in building pc for architects for the obvious reason your design needs to have accurate representation and the colors that you choose in your design needs to show in true colors there are three factors to look for in choosing a monitor which is resolution panel type and connectivity ports under resolution you have ultra hd or full hd under panel you have ips va or tn the connectivity ports are again important when you have design based work look for hdmi thunderbolt dual link dva ports and display ports if possible so all of these will be based on your budget look for a higher refresh rate as well which makes it smooth for 3d modeling and gaming mine is a 27 inch zebronix full hd monitor with a refresh rate of 165 hertz this is kind of like a mid range monitor in terms of features but i had to settle for this since i ran out of budget that i had in mind for the pc mouse and keyboard the last one on the list is mouse and keyboard and these are important because these are the devices that will be using for long hours throughout the day so it's a smart choice to look for ones that are more comfortable rather than ones that look more attractive i chose a set from dell because i like a sleek and professional design and i don't like the keypads that makes too much noise i've used a dell laptop previously so i'm kind of used to the keyboard and mouse design once again this is a personal choice if you still want rgbs in your mouse and keyboard then go for it So here's a summary of my PC configuration. I have also purchased a UPS so that I can save my files just in case of a power cut. I have tried running Lumion, Photoshop, Premiere Pro and some other games to test out and see if it runs smoothly and there were no difficulties. If you want me to test out different softwares with the setup, you can let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a separate video of it. If you found this video to be helpful, hit that like button and share it with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.